No one has been higher on the planet than one of the people to my right and Commander Chris Hadfield. I just want to welcome you back to Fort McMurray. It's, nice. You've been here last month, but now you actually got to see a little bit of the area. And one event that's happening right now in Fort McMurray is the International Air Show. Yeah. And we actually spoke with one of the pilots who is a CF-18 pilot, yeah. and he's doing a bunch of tricks during the air. I just want to reminisce back on your days as a CF-18 pilot back in Cold Lake. What was that experience like? Because I know you had to be one of the top pilots in that area. Uh, yeah, I've been a pilot my whole life. Uh, I joined the Air Cadets when I was 13 or 14, and they taught me to fly. And then I j was in the Air Force 25 years. And uh, one of the planes I flew was a CF-18. Terrific human invention, just an amazingly capable machine. I flew it both as a fighter pilot in NORAD, intercepting Soviet bombers. Uh, in Canadian airspace and then later as a test pilot to try and make the airplane fly better and did a lot of different test programs. So it's a, it's a wonderful uh, extension of, of three-dimensional human capability. And uh, I, I've had a chance to fly lots of airplanes, 100 different types of airplanes. But uh, if there's one that just gives you effortless, three-dimensional uh, ability to move and, and to see, it's phenomenal. And to have flown it here at, at Cold Lake, we lived in Cold Lake, uh, my son Evan was born in Cold Lake, so uh, it's, it's an awful lot like Fort Mac. It's nice, nice to be back, and, and, uh, and thanks for the welcome. Yeah, and you know, speaking on that experience, you've spoken to a lot of different kids right across the country, worldwide even, and that kind of helps inspire kids because you had to be the top pilot in Canada in order to get to where you were in NASA. Uh, yeah, the uh, Canadian Space Agency has only hired astronauts three times. Um, and, and so the odds of becoming an astronaut are very slim. And, but I think the necessity to be inspired is really fundamental to success. If you don't, if you don't have an inspiration, if you don't know where you're headed in life, then it's kind of hard to make decisions that, that take you where you want to go. If it, and having that idea of a long-term goal of what you might like to do in life was really useful and motivational for me. I wanted to maybe fly in space someday, and so then you could just back it up. Okay, I need to learn to scuba dive. I need to keep in shape. I need to learn to fly, maybe fly fighters, be a test pilot, go to university. All those things just because of, of a long-term inspiration. And so when I became an astronaut, I really recognized the necessity to turn that around. And as such, I've spoken thousands of times in schools, uh, right from elementary, right through to postgraduate. And, and I had a chance here in Fort Mac a month or so ago to talk at the, at the recreation, at the library, in fact, uh, to, to so many people. And, and it's, I think it's really vital to let people see the possibilities that exist and then choose their own inspiration because that's how you make better decisions in life. Speaking of inspiration, these kids look up to you so much. Like, there's no question there. Is there any particular group that you've spoken to or any group right across the country where a particular subject keeps getting brought up to you? Like usually there's a question that keeps getting brought up, whether it's do aliens exist or what's space like? Sure. Uh, when I was on the space station last year, I was up there for almost half a year, you know, halfway around the sun. And it gave me time to answer all those questions because uh, I've heard the question so many times, 21 years in the astronaut corps in the Canadian Space Agency. Uh, I, I knew what people are most interested in. How do you go to the bathroom in space? Um, how do you sleep? How do you brush your teeth? How do you trim your mustache? How do you cut your hair? What does the world look like? What's it like to be weightless? Uh, how do you prepare food? How do you digest food? What's the science you're up doing there? Uh, what, you know, what makes the space station fly? Just all the curiosities that people have asked over and over. And I, I worked with a, a videographer down in Montreal at the space agency, and she would take my little videos and make a little two minute YouTube. And between all of them, they've been seen hundreds of millions of times. So I, not only was it kind of fun to make the videos and they're kind of entertaining to watch, but it also serves the purpose of educating people. And when you see something new, like wringing out a cloth uh, without gravity, uh, the behavior of the water is so different than you expect that it, it just makes you think.
differently. And, and that's the purpose of all of it. Exploration helps you see things a different way and maybe inspire someone to, uh, to try something different or do something different with their life. And when you wrung out the cloth, I watched that YouTube video. That was one of my favorites because the water just kind of oozed over your hands. One of my personal favorites, and it's just unreal to expect water to I, act I knew that exactly way. what the water was going <laughs> to do, but, but of course, to, to your regular earthbound viewer, that's, it was actually two uh, students on the East Coast who came up with that experiment. We had a national competition. They suggested that one. I thought that's going to be really visually compelling from orbit. And it'll really show people uh, you have to rethink all of your basic assumptions of how things are going to behave when you remove one variable, in this case, gravity. And uh, the, the visual um, difference of that, I, gosh, I know tens of millions of people have seen that video. And, and I really think that's important. Don't just keep an interesting experience to yourself, but share it with other people so that they can make better decisions in their own lives. Now, just to end on a little bit of a lighter note, the last time you were up here in Fort McMurray, you were inspiring kids and everything like that, and we had a media scrum. And one of the questions I asked you, I don't know if you remember, but I asked you about Twitter because you have a huge social media presence, and it grew exponentially when you were up in space, and a lot of kids and and young adults actually went into university into the sciences programs because of the fact that you were up there. Now I asked you, would you ever tweet me back? So I, I had this thought and I, I brought this up here and I'm, I'm curious. Now what I've written is don't just reach for the stars, reach past them because you never know where your imagination can take you. you would, that be, you that? would that be something you'd like to retweet? Uh, Sure, I'll, I'll retweet. Well, I won't retweet it, but I'll respond to it. How You're about that? I can live with that. All right. Uh, that's a win in my book, the way I look at it, because I think it's inspirational. You asked, when I left that media scrum, you said, make sure it's inspirational and make sure it reaches not only yourself, but to a different people that can expand on it. And, and the real key is that it, it rests within each one of us. It rests within ourselves. The decisions that we make are the ones that help us to, to reach further than we could have reached in the past. And so that, that's the part. It's okay to say reach for the stars, but what does that mean on a practical basis? The practicality of it is what can I do today that is going to help increase my reach? And, and that's what I work so hard. That's why I, I Skype with students and talk with students and speak all over the place as well, just to let people realize that it's their own um, decision making that determines who you're going to be and so yeah I look forward to getting that tweet and I will uh, I'll respond to it shall we push a tweet together sure. what do you think let's uh, I'll let I'll let you give the magical command okay this this gonna be weird to retweet back to myself but here we go <laughs> there it's it sent. sent all right Excellent. I'll be looking for it next time I get online thank you very much okay, Commander thanks, Hadfield welcome thanks. back to Fort McMurray it's, it's a beautiful uh, time of year to be back thanks very much and you're watching go on Shaw.